What's up guys? Justin here with the sketchupessentials.com. So it's been a while since we've done a video like this. So let's talk about how we can model some different kinds of roofs in SketchUp. Make sure that you stick around to the end of the video because I'm going to talk about two great extensions for creating roofs in SketchUp that can automate a lot of these processes. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right. So the simplest roof is going to be the open gable. Usually what you're going to do in this situation is you're going to use the protractor tool in order to set whatever you want your slope to be. So um, you can set number of degrees in here like this, and then I'm going to set the same thing on the other side. And then I can come in here and I can model out the front face. From there, I'm going to push pull this back. Note that if you get a hollow face in here, you want to tap the control key to go into create new face mode, but then we're going to take these front edges or really the front face, we're going to offset it out. So we're going to tap the F key, offset this out the thickness of your roof, whatever you want that to be. Um, in this case, maybe like six inches or something like that. And then we can extrude it back. Now, um, depending on the way you want this to work, you can leave this on the front with a little down piece right here. Or you could also just extend this out by finding the inference point like this and erasing out your extra geometry. Then you can push pull this forward, push pull it back, and you've got your first roof. So say we wanted to do a box gable, which is kind of an odd roof, by the way, um, an, a box gable roof. But what I might do in that situation is I might kind of extrude this out right here and then do my slope. So protractor, slope, edges, push pull this across like this. And notice how this is kind of running into this point right here. Again, if you tap the control key to go into create new face mode, right here, then um, this is going to work just fine. But then you can just offset this face out. We're going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to erase out our guides and we're going to push pull our roof like this. And you could push pull it to the end and then push pull it further if you want to be more precise with the way your roof hangs over. And then say you wanted to add a dormer to this roof. Well, what I would do is I would find wherever the base of that dormer is going to be and block it out. And then I would just draw up like this. So what I'm doing is I'm drawing a face and I can do that same thing with my protractor in here. So whatever you need that slope to be. And so in this situation, what I usually do is I just push pull this back until it intersects with my roof or goes through my roof. I don't really care in most situations if this is going through my roof, I would probably group it before I do that just so it's not intersecting with my roof geometry, but you could push pull it back through like this. And then we do the same thing on that front side. So we would offset this to whatever the thickness of your assembly is going to be. So again, probably six inches might be a little bit thick here. You might try to create it a little bit narrower, but um, really the size of this will probably make this okay. But then we just do the same thing where we just draw these edges, erase out, our extra geometry, and then push pull it forward and back like this. Then we'll erase out these guides and we're good to go. Now, one thing that we might do um, in the future is I might make a video talking about the different ways to add different kinds of dormers to roofs. So if there's any interest in that, let me know. All right, so say we wanted to create a hip roof. There's a couple ways we could do this one. So one way that you can do it and probably the easiest way is you can use the follow me tool. So if you figure out how high you want this to be and you just draw a profile like this one, you can select the surface, activate follow me and have it follow all the way around the perimeter of this shape like this one. Now, if you needed it to overhang, all you would do is you would just make sure that you set this so that it's going out to whatever your actual overhang width is going to be like this. So now if we were to do the same thing, so select this face, or you could select the edges around the perimeter, but you really just need to select the face, but you can use the follow me tool and notice how this has a little bit of overlap in here. Now you might have to come in here and draw along an edge in order to heal the face 
on the bottom, but that shouldn't be that big of a deal. And so another way that you could do that is the same way that we've done this before. So I'm gonna draw this up to whatever I want the height to be. And I'm just gonna keep it simple for this example. So you could push it up to whatever height you want this to be. And so we're gonna to get to this point. We'll say that you want it to slope this way in this direction, but you want a different slope in the other direction. What you could do is you could use the protractor tool like this, and you could figure out your angle. So in this case, I'm gonna do that same thing. Say I wanted a different angle this way. So say on the front side, I wanted this to be 45 degrees instead of 35 degrees. All you have to do is activate the move tool by tapping the M key. You can click on a point and you can move it like this. So you can use this in order to move this until it intersects with that point right here. So you could do a different slope on this end right here if you wanted to do that. And then, you know, one thing that you could think about doing is you might just take this face and I'm just going to pick this up and try not to pick anything else up, but you could just use the move tool in copy mode here, and then you could flip it. So I'm going to use the flip tool right here, and then I'm just going to move it back so that this aligns with my bottom piece right here. And then you can just erase out this extra geometry because that's going to that's going to basically intersect this with that face. So you could use this in order to create a hip roof that has different slopes on it. Okay, so say you want to do a hip and valley roof. There's a couple different ways that you could do this as well. So one of the ways that I would recommend is um, figuring out what your overhang is going to be. So say I'm going to have a 12 inch overhang right here. So then what I'm going to do from that overhang is I'm going to figure out my slope. So say my slope's going to be 35 degrees right here. So what I'm going to do in this case is I'm actually going to draw this bigger um, than anything on this surface right here. And so what I'm basically doing is doing something where I know if I extrude this along the surface that it's going to cover all of my overlaps in here. But you can use the follow me tool in order to do this right here. And so this looks messy, but it's not really that bad. Um, we're just going to go in here and delete out some extra geometry. But what you want to do is you want to triple click to select all of this and you want to do a right click and you want to intersect your faces with your model. So when you intersect your faces with your model, notice how I get all these extra edges in here. That means that I can now come in here and delete out all of the stuff that's extra. So for example, all of these tall roofs, other things like that, that are way too tall, that aren't actually going to be a part of the roof, I can just kind of get rid of them. So I'm just going to delete these out. Um, anything that's way too tall. And so notice how when I'm done with that, what that does is that leaves me with this full on hip and valley roof on top of this roof. Now, alternatively, and the way that I would probably do this instead is there is a free extension in the Sketchication plugin store called Roof by TIG. And what it does is it'll allow you to enter in some information based on a face. So I'm gonna pick this face right here. I'm gonna set my slope in here and say that it was going to be 35 degrees in here. I don't think 35 degrees is exactly right, but that's fine. Um, and you can also set the soffit size. So how far out it hangs. But if you just click on OK, what that's going to do is that's going to come in here and that's going to generate that roof for you automatically. So and the cool thing about that is if you don't like it, you can just come back in here, undo and then run it again. So um, in this case, say I wanted my roof to be a one to two, I can actually type in that ratio hit the enter key and it's going to generate that automatically. So that's going to be your fast way of creating those hip and valley roofs. Um, but you can do it either way, depending on what you're trying to do. All right. So a gamble roof is going to be pretty simple. This is kind of like your barn roof in here. So there's a couple ways that you could do this one as well. So um, what I would do in this situation is I just need the profile of the front of my roof. And so you could definitely come in here and you could draw a line up to figure out where the top of your roof is going to be. And usually these roofs are going to have different slopes on them. So what you could do is you could use the protractor tool um, and set your first slope. So say my first slope was going to be like 65 degrees. So I could draw a line up to wherever I want that to end. And then I could just draw a line across. The other thing you could do is if you wanted to set both this slope and the other slope, you could use the protractor in order to set the number of degrees here as well. So say I wanted this to be 25 degrees. You could just draw up and then across. And then you could just take that and you could move, use the move tool in copy mode. And then you could use the flip tool in order to flip it and you could move it back 
and now you've got the profile of your roof right here. And then from there, we would just do what we've done before, right? You would push pull this across in order to create this surface, but then you would offset this out in order to create your actual roof itself right here. So you would draw a line down, a line down, get rid of this extra junk that's in here. And then you could push pull this forward and back. like this. So another way that you could do that is you could also use the arc tool or the circle tool. So I'm going to use the arc tool and I'm going to tap the A key. And what I want is I want to set this so that it creates a circle with four sides. So remember that you can set the number of sides by typing in a value like this. Well, now if I single click, single click, and then I tap the up arrow key like this, this is going to draw a circle. So this is actually a circle. And if I was to come in here and adjust this, I can adjust the number of segments. Notice how it smooths out. But in this case, I just want four segments. Well, what that's done is that's created this in here where now I have those segments and I can use this in order to create that roof. And here's that issue that I was talking about where sometimes you extrude it back and it's hollow. If you tap the control key, move your mouse and then click like this, then it's going to give you kind of a smooth face in here. If you tap the control key when you're doing this, what it's going to do is it's going to put you in create new face mode and it'll actually create a face right here um, that you can use for your extrusion. Now, if I push pull this back, notice how one thing that we're seeing here is this is creating a smooth surface when we extrude this across. That just means that the edges that are in here are marked as soft or smooth. So in this case, it's going to be both. But if we uncheck soften and smooth, then you just get the regular face in here. Alternatively, because this is considered a curve, if you were to right click on it and just explode the curve, then those edges are no longer going to be softened and smooth. But you can use this in order to really quickly create your gambrel roof. All right, so say we wanted to make a Dutch gable roof, which I've never actually had to do before. So this is how I would go about this. But if any of my roofers have uh, any insight into how they would do this, I'd love to hear it. Um, you'd probably actually use a protractor tool to set your slope, but we're going to go ahead and set this up. And I'm going to use the follow me tool in order to extrude this around in a circle like this. Well, that Dutch gable, what it does is it has a certain area where this kind of like straightens back out um, and becomes flat. So probably what I would do in this situation is I would find whatever that location is and I would draw a line across it. So what, wherever you want the actual like gable piece itself to be, um, you could just find that point right here. And then you could just use the move tool and move this point forward so that it aligns right here. And I would tap that left arrow key because it's going to allow you to um, to inference to a point. But now you've got this kind of like gable that's going up before you've got this other slope that's going across here. All right, and then once we get to this point, I would just draw a line across right here. Now you do want to make sure that you split this face so that this can move properly. Um, but you can then use the move tool in order to move this point. Out. And if you tap the left arrow key, that's going to more enable your snapping in here so that this can snap to straight up and down. Now those get funky. There's a lot of different kinds of those roofs. So um, you're definitely going to have to get a little bit creative if you are trying to model things out in a certain way. But that's at least a good starting point for that kind of a roof in SketchUp. And then from here, there's other more like complex roofs, right? So you might want to do like a gazebo or something like that. Um, that would be more of a circular shape, but say that you were to draw a gazebo. Um, what I would do for the roof is I would draw a circle and I would type in the six so that I have six sides and I'm going to hit enter or however many sides your gazebo is going to have like this. And so you're going to have your basic gazebo shape in here and you might um, explode that curve just so these extrude up properly. But in the case of a gazebo like this one, probably what I would do is I would find that central point. And so you can do that just by um, using your inferencing right here in order to find this point. But then I would draw a line up to whatever that height's going to be. And you could use the protractor tool again in order to set that slope obviously. So say that you wanted it to be um, 45 degrees right here, then you can just draw that line up to this point. And then what you're going to do in this situation is you're going to use the follow me tool in order to generate this one. So you're just going to select the face, 
use the follow me tool and notice how it's going to put in those different sides. Now again, and I keep forgetting to do this, but you're going to want to, you're probably going to actually want to model this based on your overhang um, rather than the central point right here. So again, just same thing, whatever you want your slope to be, 45 degrees, just make sure you draw your line all the way up then all the way down. And then that's going to give you your roof that overhangs right here. And then from there, one thing you could do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna group this. I'm just gonna select it all um, and then right click and hide. But you could also draw a line across this in order to heal this face. And you could offset it in by whatever you want your framing thickness to be. And then you could push pull this down so that you get that kind of like overhang or um, the fascia piece on that roof. Now, if I do an edit, unhide all, we've got our fascia on here as well. So you could use this in order to create something that more follows along a circle in this situation. And then to close out this video, if you do want to create additional kinds of roofs, there are two extensions that I want to recommend to you. The first is going to be Roof by TIG, which we already talked about. That creates a number of different roofs with different parameters. So there's also a help file in here that you can download that talks you through how all the different options work. Um, and um, you can download that for free from Sketchication. Um, if you're looking for something even more advanced, Valley Architects has a great tool um, that creates a lot of different kinds of roofs. So you can kind of see what the different preset styles are in here. You can see how for those like complicated Dutch roofs and other things like that, you may just want to use Valley Architects tools. There are tutorials down below talking through how you can create different things with this tool. But if you are creating more complex roofs and you do want to kind of automate that process a little bit more, um, I would recommend checking out this tool. Um, it's $39 a year to use this, which is not very much a month, or you might just go with the um, $118 a year um, to get everything in this tool set. And there's a lot of great stuff in here, like cladding tools, stair tools, wall tools, fence tools. Um, this is one of those things that I highly, highly recommend if you're creating these kinds of things. Um, it's less than $10 a month and you get access to all of those different tools. So you can model these all for free. You can also also check out these awesome extensions um, that are going to help you out with, or if you want to automate the process, you can go with extensions as well. All right, so that's where I'm in this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. If you have any tips for creating roofs in SketchUp, I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you do want to learn more about modeling in SketchUp, make sure you check out my course. I will link to that on this page where we do get a lot more in-depth on modeling in SketchUp. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. And I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.